Okay, I thought I would do a review on this Watts Up Pro meter. It's a plug-in, something like the kilowatt meters, but it's uh, quite a bit more sophisticated. It has logging built into it, at least this Pro version. And uh, you can plug a USB cable into the side here, download the data, and uh, get a lot more details on what's going on with your power usage. So here I am on the main part of the menu. Just reading the watts, I have it connected up to my voltmeter here. Let me just turn that on. Come down, you can see we're drawing 9.2 watts. Uh, select is the sub menu. So in the main menu, we're on first mode here. Watts, hit it again, it tells me the minimum watts, zero. The maximum was 13.8, which was probably right when we powered it up. This is the power factor, this is the volt amps, and then back to watts again. If I hit the next mode button, it tells me the watt hours uh, and kilowatt hours, so that's something to accumulate over time. Hit the select again, gives you your average monthly kilowatt hours, so if you keep this plugged in, it'll tell you what you're averaging over the month in something single appliance like a refrigerator. <clears throat> There's a time mode. Tells you the amount of lapse time. So since I plugged it in down here, we've been running for 3 minutes 56 seconds. So it's got a one second counter inside that's accumulating the data. Hit select again. Tells me the duty cycle. So here's something that you can, you can set a threshold for when the uh, you want the thing to measure whether the appliance is on or not. So like a refrigerator, which might take 200 watts when it's running, but only 40 watts when the door is open, you can set it with a duty cycle, uh, let's say 20%, or you can actually set that, that lower wattage level to have the thing recognize that the device is actually on or off. It's just trying to flag how often something comes on or off, but it's still going to accumulate the number of watts. The next mode is the cost mode so here you can figure out what your uh, daily or monthly costs are you can enter separately enter what your cost per kilowatt hour is in there there's the volts mode so this tells you right now we're reading 119 volts on the line if I hit select it says the minimum was 118.9 and maximum was 119.8 and that's it so now we'll go down to the last mode which is the current Tells us the current amps 0.11. Hit select again. Minimum amps was 0.07. Maximum was 0.196. So you can see you get a lot more uh, details in the menuing system here. We'll be able to read minimax watts, minimax amps, uh, uh, get your cost information, your kilowatt hours accumulated, and uh, and again, if you set up the logging on this, you can you can log a lot of data. So let's sh show you on the computer how to get that set up and I'll show you one of the test runs I did. Okay so I'm up on the computer and I have the software loaded. This is software you can download free from their website. <clears throat> the main page comes up looking like this. If you're a new user you can just uh, step through the thing. If you're an advanced user you can just hit one step logging and it'll download the data for you. So let's go to this upper step here. It just says uh, hit the next button so we hit the next button step one USB connection driver install plug the meter into the power we'll do all, we've done all that already step two is a test the USB port okay it already did it it found it on Comfine it says I have the pro version meter detected you can go to the next step we'll hit next <clears throat> and here is where you would normally come to when you do the advanced thing so now we, all we want to do is to uh, uh, hit the request data and it'll download the data. You can see it's got 32k worth of data to transfer down. So I'll start uh, transferring the data and you can st start to see it coming down here.
here it comes. It's going to take about three minutes, so I'm going to pause the video. Okay, as it's finishing up here, I want to make a point. I have the Pro version, which is, has a 32K memory. They also have an ES version, which is extended storage. It gives you a lot more data points. Um, but it turns out that you can, uh, you can use that memory wisely, and I'll show you that in a second. I set it up to so only capture watts, but you can actually have it so it ca captures all of those things that I mentioned in the menu system, which uh, cuts down the amount of time that you would log things or would uh, you'd have to set the interval how often it would capture a piece of data to ex give you a flexibility on the total time that you can record. All right, so we're finishing up here. You can see it's been 3 minutes 45 seconds, 100%. And now I got a choice. I can either view a table, which is also the same as the tab up, tab up there, or view a graph, which is this graph up here. So let's just view the table. What you end up with here is a spreadsheet, basically, and it would have all of the parameters across the top there. And it, but as I mentioned, I only captured the watts because I wanted it to run for the longest period of time. And you can see it captured the watts every second on this on this left column here. Now this data, <coughs> you can do a file store. Save table as, and it'll save it as a as a text file that's t that's uh, delimited so that you can import it into a spreadsheet and do everything that you might want with it. I'm going to hit the graph mode here, but I'm going to have to change the resolution. So hold on. All right, so here's the graph, and uh, as I said, I only selected uh, when I did the recording, only selected for the watts to be recorded, but this captured about a uh, eight hour period overnight and this was connected up to our electric blanket <coughs> and so all of the times that the electric blanket came on you can see it went from zero watts up to about 165 watts now what's kind of neat about this is we can we can hit the zoom button and zoom right in on these spikes and you can figure out how often they're happening and uh, how long they go measure the watts very precisely and the time very precisely and these also correspond <coughs> on that what's in the table the other thing you can do is you can select the 3D option and it'll t it'll show you the period of time that it's on versus off. You can change the depth of the graph. You can rotate the graph around a little bit. You can even save any one of these graph views uh, if you're doing a report or something. So that's pretty cool. Okay, back to the main page here. A couple more things you can do. Uh, you can view the communication log with the device. You can read the calibration data. That's all pretty straightforward. You can do this payback uh, worksheet where if you, if you ran a run connecting this up to, let's say, your refrigerator, but then uh, you were looking at buying a, you know, a different refrigerator, you can enter up the model number. You can enter the kilowatt hours per month that it's supposed to use and what its price is. And then based on the data that you collected through the meter and your cost per kilowatt hour in your area, it'll tell you what your monthly savings would be as well as what your payback period would be. So that's kind of a little worksheet there that can be useful. The, uh, the next setting is the meters setting, which is where most of the setup that you want to do with for this meter. So you're going to enter your local kilowatt hour. So here I'm at, uh, in our area, it's about 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, this duty threshold, as I mentioned before, is the value that would have to be exceeded, in this case 20 watts, before the meter would be, say, okay, this device is on versus in standby mode. So this would be like a refrigerator that might have a 15 watt bulb in it, you want to make sure that uh, it gets over 20 watts registered before it indicates that, oh no, probably the compressor is on and it's not just someone opening the door. Uh, the next thing would be just the memory. You can clear the memory, so get rid of everything that's in there. And then this is the 
memory full options, you can either have it when it's storing data to store the whole memory until it's full and then just come to a stop. You can have it go to the end and then start to overwrite back in the beginning. So that's like a first in, first out kind of an overwrite situation. So it basically gives you the last 32,000 samples that it ran would be in there. And then the automatic, uh, which is uh, a little more complicated and you have to go in the manual to figure out what that is. It actually increases the interval time versus having a standard time. But when you, if you change any of this, you can hit send settings to the meter and it'll transfer it down. <coughs> in the logging, you can hit this read settings from the meter. It tells you basically what kind of meter it is. It tells the software. Now the last two tabs are the most important. <coughs> Let's start at this logging items page. You can see you've got your full list of items here that you can select. And you've got 32,000 records that you can have it stored in. So each, if, you tap, if I just do 32,000 records and have it all watts, then I'm going to be able to have the smallest period of time, which is one second, and I can actually go, in this case, for nine hours with one item in this particular model. If I also want to capture, let's say, the volts and the amps, you can see that the number of records drops down. If I go over to my interval time, I've lost, I'm now down to three hours worth of capture time at one second. I can increase this to two second interval, and that will double. So you can kind of see what that relationship is. So and so on and so forth. So you can you can you can select them all. You can tell it's only down to 1,600 records, and at the one second time period, I'm only going to be able to go 27 minutes. So this is where you have your trade-offs of how long you want to go and what are what's the critical information that you're trying to capture. Uh, in the example I had, or I was just trying to try to capture the watts over a nine-hour period of time, measuring at a one second interval. But when you get all these things uh, set up, you can just hit the send settings to the meter and it'll send it down, count received, and you're all set. So that's how you uh, operate this Watts Up meter.